Good morning, good afternoon and good evening ladies and gentlemen. We would like to extend a very warm welcome to each one of you at the nice global conclave from the laps of the beautiful Himalayas where the Nepal Institute for International Cooperation and Engagement is located. The think tank was established in the month of February in the year 2016. It undertakes independent research in the field of international relations, foreign policy, security studies and development. NICE has four research centers: China Studies, Neighborhood Studies, Non-Traditional Security Studies, and Security and Strategic Studies. The institute focuses on eight research topics: climate change and energy, global governance, sustainable development and smart cities, refugee and migration, China's Belt and Road Initiative, border and transboundary water politics, Indo-Pacific affairs, disaster management, and international economy and development. Previously, Nice has had the opportunity to host distinguished speakers from all around the globe. It was a great pleasure inviting me to speak here at Nice. It's a real pleasure to be able to speak with all of you. Well, thank you anyway, and I certainly admire the work that you're doing. Uh, I'm very happy to be with you all. Nice Global Conclave is the flagship event of the Nepal Institute for International Cooperation and Engagement Nepal. The theme of the 3-day conference is Connecting Nepal to the World by bringing leaders, diplomats, business leaders and scholars from all around the globe. The objective of the conclave is to introduce Nepal to the world and at the same time update the Nepalese policy makers and experts about the fast changing geopolitics which will help Nepal reshape its foreign policy to achieve its national goal. This is the 22nd session of the conference and to chair and moderate this session it's a real pleasure to have with us Dr. Pramod Jaiswal. Dr. Pramod Jaiswal is the research director at the Nepal Institute for International Cooperation and Engagement. He is a visiting fellow at the Sandia National Laboratories, New Mexico, and senior fellow at the Institute of Peace and Conflict Studies, New Delhi. Dr. Jaiswal has been a regular and visiting faculty at different universities of Nepal and China. Without any further ado, sir. I'd request you to take the session forward. Thank you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Excellencies and dear participants. This is the 22nd session of NICE Global Conclave, and it is the second session of Diplomats Conclave. At this session, we have invited the ambassadors who are serving at different missions based in Kathmandu, as well as Nepalese ambassadors serving at different missions around the world. To manage time zone, if I diplomatic conclave was held on Friday, and you can watch the recorded program on our YouTube channel, Nice Nepal. The Nice Global Conclave is an academic discussion. The chair, moderator, and panelist of this session will speak in open format without protocol precedence. In this session, we'd like to request Excellencies to look at Nepal's relation with the countries they are serving in. We'd also like you to focus more on the recent development, especially focus, focusing on the economic aspects how countries can cooperate to fight the pandemic and what can be the possible what can be possible areas of cooperation in the future uh, since we have to wind up this session within 15 minutes i uh, would 50 minutes we'd like to request the excellencies to make their remarks within eight minutes we are also experiencing internet issues so if we get disconnected connected please be here with us without much delay let me invite ambassador dr narad nath uh, bhardwaj uh, nepalese ambassador and shall I start? Yes, sir, please. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to extend my warmest thank 
for inviting me in this diplomatic conclave. I've been currently working as the ambassador of Nepal to Qatar. As you know, Qatar is a country which has been rapidly rising as an economic as well as a strategic powerhouse of the Middle East. Nepal and Qatar have had very long diplomatic relationship stretching from 1977 till the present date and we have had very smooth and constructive relationship between us. Nepal and Qatar have shared a lot of commonalities of interest in many international forage and have supported each other in most of the global, regional and contemporary issues. In recent years, Nepal and Qatar have been expanding and promoting their engagements in many areas ranging from diplomacy to economic development, climate change, and their common effort to combat terrorism. Qatar is a country which takes petroleum and natural gas as its corner stone of economics. Its 70% of revenue is generated from petroleum and natural gas. And 60% uh, of its domestic gross product also comes from these sectors. And almost 85% of its export constitutes petroleum and the gas products. It is one of the third largest gas producing countries of the world and produces one of the best qualities, LNG gas, which has been dominating international market in recent years. Nepal and Qatar have been in economic interactions for quite some time. But the balance of trade is heavily tilted to the side of Qatar. Very small quantity of products have been exported to Qatar from Nepal. The range of products is also very limited. We are exporting a limited quantity of vegetables, spices, some finished food products like the noodles, pasta, macaroni, and other things. But we have been importing a huge quantity of electronic products, copper, and materials made thereof and steel and iron products have also been imported from India in a huge quantity. According to the statistics of 2018, Nepal exported commodities worth 948,448 US dollars, whereas it imported $378,648 worth of commodities. This shows that the trade of balance between Qatar and Nepal is heavily in favor of Qatar and it needs to be corrected. Nepal and Qatar have been doing business, but it's quite lukewarm and some efforts from business sectors is being made, but it's not sufficient. The 2015 mega earthquake in Nepal disrupted a supply chain that was being built between the Middle Eastern countries and Nepal. 
but because of the huge disruption and nepal's failure to showcase its commodities worth exporting the quantity of export rate is still very meager we all know that without a vibrant export rate a country can never prosper and develop we need to have focus on our capacities our productive capacities and should be able to showcase what we are worth exporting during my tenure in qatar i have been talking with many institutions related to export trade and investment organizations as well and have been often reminded that a country which wants to build its export trade first must concentrate on its productive abilities we have a huge possibilities to improve trade in the field of agriculture because agri nepal provides a very unique space for producing all kinds of food commodities because it is endowed with a diverse of geography as well as climatic conditions which affords production of any kinds of food commodities any time of the year if we can find out identify our strengths and improve these productivities nepal can grow as a very good food basket for food importing countries like qatar and other countries of the middle east at present qatar has been actually showcasing itself in different fields of endeavors it has not only been doing unprecedented things in the field of agricultural productivity being a desert country one would imagine that qatar's plan for attaining sustainability in, in agriculture would be a pipe dream but as an ambassador of a country which boasts of being agricultural country i have seen that agri, uh, qatar has made amazing progress in agricultural productivity the cutting edge technology is being used to produce food stuffs agricultural other uh, agricultural products such as the vegetables fruits mushrooms and dairy products qatar has one already one minute left we have one minute left i'm sorry i i would like to get uh, i think two minutes more because you know is i think is important it's a very good forum i want to share it but still i'll try to be in time um thank you very much now uh, qatar has been uh, putting forward a sustainability strategy according to which qatar will achieve 70% self sufficiency in uh, vegetables in 2025 now qatar has been playing a very dynamic vibrant role in the field of diplomacy as a small country it has been exerting disproportional clout in the international politics it successfully mediated between the united states and the taliban in afghanistan it mediated taliban and the afghan government it also mediated when lebanon was devastated by a huge bomb explosion last year and has been mediating conflict between israel and palestine it has been helping international community to attain sustainable development alleviating discrimination against women and religious minorities all around the world 
not only in the Middle East, its cloud and diplomatic influences extend to the North African countries also. In recent months, Qatar's role in mediating the conflict that has arisen on the issue of Renaissance Dam over the Nile River is very exemplary. Because of its diplomatic intervention, the, the conflict relations between Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan has been contained and uh, there is a possibility of peaceful resolution of this conflict. In this way, Qatar has been a very uh, active and dynamic partners in the uh, diplomatic communities of the Middle East. And for Nepal, it has been a very reliable and trustworthy friend. Today, there are 350,000 Nepalese in Qatar. It has provided a huge employment market for the Nepalese people. And Qatar happens to be the... We are really sorry, sir. Sort. We have to... We are really I sorry, just, sir. We have to... Come up I just ended, sir. Just one minute. Qatar has been sending more than 10% of the revenue that Nepal receives from around the world. The Nepalese people constitute more than 12% of the Qatar population and the Qatari government has uh, given considerable importance and respect to the Nepalese people and we are hoping that this labor uh, employment market will be expanded in the days to come and nepal Qatar relation uh, will expand and be more vibrant and meaningful in the days to come. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ambassador Narad Nath Bhardwaj, for your remarks. We would like to request all the excellencies to please stick by the time, otherwise it would be embarrassing to not include all the ambass ambassadors at this session. Uh, we have uh, the Foreign Secretary of Sri Lanka addressing at 6 o'clock sharp Nepal time, so we do not want to delay this session. So now, without any delay, may I now invite Ambassador Dona Depres, Head of Delegation, uh, delegation of European to Nepal to make her remarks. Over to your excellencies. Thank you very much. Um, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Yeah. Please. Well, thank you very much um, for, in, for having invited me here. And thank you very much for this um, initiative, because I think it, the, the subject is really important, is the place of Nepal um, in the world and how to get forward, how to get a a good recovery from this um, pandemic. So you asked her to speak about recent developments, including uh, how the European Union can support Nepal uh, through this kind of pandemic, through the recovery, and also what could be the economic opportunities for Nepal. So let me just start by saying that since the start of the pandemic, the European Union has really spearheaded the global efforts to fight the pandemic. We have invested heavily in uh, the research for vaccines. We have invested about 4 billion euros. And I, I want to highlight also something that is, I think, a fact which is very little known, is that we have exported half of our production of vaccines to 90 countries in the world. So we have um, exported up to now around 340 million doses of vaccines which is the same as what we have provided our own population for vaccination. Of course, you know that we are one of the first uh, and, and foremost uh, donors to COVAX. Uh, so one out of three vaccines currently provided to the world has been funded by the EU. And as Team Europe, so this is with our financial institution and with our member states, we will also donate 100 million vaccines to 90 countries uh, in the world by the end of this year. I think this is all very, very important uh, work to help uh, low and middle income countries uh, recover from the pandemic. And this, of course, benefits directly and indirectly Nepal. Of course, we know that this is not sufficient, so we need to continue our fight 
against the pandemic. We have also, as Team Europe, uh, there are 12 member states of the European Union that have provided medical emergency supplies to Nepal for now, so which can support Nepal in its fight against this second wave. We will also, of course, very closely monitor the distribution and the use of the, those goods uh, when the, in the country. At the same time, uh, we have also provided specifically to Nepal um, an additional 75 million euros, which is, uh, I think, 9 billion uh, Nepali uh, rupees, um, to support the state budget directly, to create space in the state budget so that the state budget could support the Nepali people to recover uh, from this pandemic. What I want to say also is that for the moment we are um, working, we are finalizing our programming for the next uh, programming period 21-27. Um, and in this uh, green, resilient, inclusive recovery from COVID-19 will play a key role. This is really one of our key priorities it's the it, it it is a parallel uh, to the european green deal which is our top priority within the eu which is we want to be a global leader working on climate action we believe that we need to work on climate action together we have one planet and we all need to work on preserving that planet be it to fight climate change be it to support uh, biodiversity uh, be it to support a sustainable and socially just uh, economic. So this is where with other development partners and with the government of Nepal, uh, we have uh, signed a joint declaration in December 2020 that we would continue to work on green, resilient, inclusive recovery. So I think that is very important. It means that we want to support Nepal's green growth by increasing energy efficiency and the use of renewable energy but also to create jobs in sustainable agriculture and forestry and to invest in Nepal's human capital through education and nutrition. And of course, within all of this, we want to continue to support the governance systems. And this is where I want to get to the, the last part of your question, which was on the economic opportunities for Nepal. We strongly believe that working on green growth will provide many economic opportunities. This is not an either or, or uh, story. In the EU, we have been able to reduce greenhouse gas emissions while still increasing our GDP. And the same can happen for Nepal. So this is where we want to support Nepal to create green jobs uh, within Nepal in sustainable agriculture. Um, the ambassador before me spoke about uh, agriculture and uh, production of agricultural products. I think those, those are really a niche sector for Nepal. Uh, we are supporting, for example, uh, the, um, the production and the export of coffee. I think uh, Nepal has a very pristine uh, image across the world with the Himalayas and with this uh, image of producing um, very high quality coffee. So this, I think, can be really a niche product for Nepal. Uh, we also support the Pashmina sector, where we would want Nepal to also, of course, do more of the value chain itself. So not to import the fibers from China, but to have the Pashmina goats within. So this is where we work with the Nepali authorities, um, but also, um, also with the World Bank, for example, to have more of these uh, goats uh, within Nepal. But also we want to work on um, improving uh, access uh, to quality education. This will allow both the workers within Nepal to have better jobs and to be able to, pro to, to contribute better to the economic growth within Nepal, but it will also allow those uh, workers of Nepal who will migrate abroad to be better skilled and thus to bring back uh, more remittances. So I think that is also uh, a part which is very important I think, you know, for the moment, the um, European Union provides uh, a commercial scheme, which is called Everything But Arms, EBA, uh, to Nepal as least developed country. This means that all exports from Nepal can enter the European Union without any duty, nor quota, nor tariff, except for arms. But the issue is that Nepal is not 
uh, using it sufficiently is not using this, this scheme, which would allow Nepal to export much more. This is where I think Nepal should really concentrate on improving also the business and the regulatory environment within Nepal to attract more foreign direct investment, even smaller foreign direct investment from, for example, smaller European businesses who would want to invest here in local agriculture products or in tourism. Um, so those, uh, that business environment has to be conducive to uh, investments. It has to be stable. It has to be um, um, trust worthy for foreign uh, investors. So this is where I think there are many economic opportunities for Nepal, and we look forward to working with Nepal uh, on these in the coming years. That's it for me. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ambassador Nona de Press, for being on time. May I now request Ambassador Ram Kaji Khadka, Nepal's ambassador to Germany. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson and Moderator of Session, Dr. Zaiswal. Excellencies, uh, very good uh, afternoon and good evening and good uh, morning. I feel very happy and honored to be part of this uh, conclave organized under the aegis of Nepal Institute for International Cooperation and Engagement. To begin with, without uh, further ado, I would like to give you a brief outline of my statement, which I have divided into five parts as for the format provided by the organizer. Bilateral relations between Nepal and Germany, economic engagement and potentials, German support to Nepal during the pandemic, economic diplomacy, and prospects of new areas of cooperation. Uh, on the bilateral uh, uh, relations between the, uh, Nepal and uh, Germany, uh, in the in age of convergence and interdependence, the multifaceted and multidynamic relations between Nepal and Germany have been evidently flourishing ever since the establishment of diplomatic ties in 1958. Germany established its residential embassy in Kathmandu in 1963, which Nepal reciprocated with the establishment of its embassy in Bonn in 1965 and later on shifted to Berlin in 2000 following the German reunification. Uh, bilateral relations between uh, the two countries are further garnered, policed, and augmented today with the increased political commitment of the leadership of both the countries. These relations have been further uh, ameliorated through exchange of uh, visits at various levels. On the economic engagement and potential of expansion, Germany, uh, the fourth largest in the world and the largest economy in the EU, a permanent regional, uh, a prominent regional and global player, and one of the highest ODA contributing countries with 0.66% of GNI per capita ODA in 2020 is one of the key players in the world. Germany does not only provide development cooperation to Nepal bilaterally, but also does so through EU, the UN and IFIs. Germany is one of the major development partners of Nepal. Ever since the beginning of development cooperation through technology transfer to Tapathali Technical Training Institute in 1961, Germany has been extending all the possible support to Nepal in times of ease as well as hardships created by conflict and crisis such as earthquake disasters and the COVID-19 pandemic in addition to the regular development cooperation. Uh, Nepal and Germany signed an MOU to establish bilateral consultation mechanism between uh, two foreign ministries in 2018. The second edition of the BCM took place in September 2020, which provides an opportunity to review political relations, the progress made in economic cooperation, environmental, cultural, scientific, technological agendas, resolve any obstacles and set a new planning in place to move forward. Nepal and Germany have established a bilateral mechanism between the Ministry of Finance and the Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development to hold negotiations on a regular uh, fashion in order to discuss, review, and the plan for future economic cooperation. Uh, uh, German cooperation during the earthquake 2015. Germany provided immediate support to Nepal during the devastating earthquake for rescue, rehabilitation, and reintegration, followed by the lower term, longer term support for reconstruction of infrastructure. Federal Foreign Office of Germany provided immediate relief, uh, relief uh, equivalent to Euro 3.5 million plus 1 million from BMZ through various channels, especially the INGOs. The German government placed the support of uh, 30 million euros for uh, reconstruction of works to be spent under the declared priority sectors of Nepal, uh, primarily in health sector. It is estimated that around Euro 120 million was mobilized by the NGOs and private sector to support the earthquake victims. Germany uh, and uh, on the 
support to Nepal during the pandemic. Uh, Germany came forward with a gesture of friendship and ever expanding cooperation through announcement of additional 1 million euro of grant assistance to Nepal to fight the COVID-19 global pandemic during the first wave. This amount was supposed to be spent in the capacity building and institutional strengthening of the public health system in Nepal. When Nepal was marred by the peak of the second wave of the pandemic, Germany was reeling under the third wave. Health facilities and, and other makeshift arrangements were almost overwhelmed in Germany, but Germany continued to support developing countries like Nepal and made a contribution of Euro, uh, 2.2 billion euros to COVAX initiative, where Nepal is also one of the benefic beneficiaries as an LDC. Likewise, Germany provided much needed support of medical equipment and supplies to Nepal to fight the uh, COVID-19 pandemic through the EU's civil protection mechanism, uh, being one of the 12 countries as Ambassador uh, De Press already mentioned. Uh, similarly, 16 German uh, NGOs have been engaged in fundraising to provide support materials to needy people through their respective local NGO partners in Nepal. Caritas Germany and German Red, Red Cross Society have made commitment to increase their funding to Caritas Nepal and Caritas uh, Red, uh, sorry, Nepal Red Cross Society, respectively. Uh, on the economic diplomacy front, the first, first and the foremost is a trade. Germany is the fourth largest export trading partner for Nepal. Majority Nepal, major Nepali products that are exported in German market include hand, handmade woolen carpet, pasmina, handicraft, silver jewelry, garments, leather wooden and leather wooden and bamboo goods, lentils, tea, coffee, large cardamom, essential oils and from herbal and aromatic plants and organic uh, spices. Products that we import from Germany include industrial raw materials, chemicals, machinery equipment and parts, electric and electronic goods, optical machinery photography equipment and items, medical and surgical equipment, pharmaceutical products, vehicles, etc. There is abundance of opportunity for enhancement of trade between the two countries, given the favorable market access uh, uh, to EU's, uh, uh, to European Union, including Germany, because of the concession provided by uh, everything but arms measures. Uh, Nepal and Germany signed a bilateral trade and investment protection agreement in 1986, only second to France. In the investment front, Germany is the is one of the fr front runners in terms of FDI investment in foreign countries. In 2019, only 98.7 a billion US dollar was invested from Germany in, in the form of FDI. However, the German FDI flow inflow in Nepal is very low until uh, from the beginning until now. The German FDI into Nepal stood at around 10 million euros in 115 projects, resulting into the creation of uh, almost 5,000 jobs. KFW Bank has made an amount of around euros 200 million in mid March Sangha hydropower project. FDI from private sector is focused in small hydropower, tea plantation, spices and medicinal herbs and aromatic plants, beverage productions, and hospitals. Technology transfer. Germany has proven track record of being a leading country in technology, engineering, and innovation, ushering the world towards technological innovation and development, with which can yield a multiplier effect in renewable energy, construction industry, uh, agriculture development, digitalization, robotics, automobiles, cutting edge technology, industrial output, medicinal, medical services. Uh, tourism promotion is another uh, important function that uh, the embassy is. Uh, uh, undertaking. Uh, tourism promotion has remained one of the primary focus of, the, of, the, of our job. Uh, Germany stands in the sixth position among the uh, source countries of tourists embarking to Nepal for tourism. In 2019, uh, 37,000 tourists visited Nepal as 36% of tourists visiting Nepal are rep repeaters. The embassy wishes to focus on expanding the number of few new tourists by convincing that Nepal is a must visit country in the world, not only because of Mount Everest and Lumini, but also because Nepal offers abundance, abundance of other soft tourism products based on natural culture. Well, we have one more minute, sir. Uh, religious you. sites beyond those adventure tourism products and services. Uh, Nepal has been participating in ITB Berlin and the International Tourism Trade Expo since 33 years with a view to promote and highlight Nepal's tourism. We also have the opportunity to enhance cooperation between Nepal Tourism Board and Association of German Travel Agencies. In addition, organization of fam trips, participation in carnivals, Nepal uh, Day celebration have helped sensitize potential German travelers to Nepal. Uh, human resource development, uh, of course, uh, th this has been remained a very important uh, segment of our cooperation. Um, every year, around 1,500 students uh, uh, embark to Germany for uh, pursuing higher studies. Uh, 
uh, and the majority of them come for uh, engineering, law, economics, and social sciences, mathematics, and human medicines. Uh, and the prospects for new area of cooperation, this is the last one I want to highlight. Uh, climate change issues, of course, this is the uh, this has the prospect as uh, uh, Ambassador Nuna Depres has also uh, sp uh, sp uh, spoken about it. Uh, climate change has emerged as an existential threat. Therefore, illnesses like Nepal, it is uh, uh, illnesses like Nepal, uh, it is very important to secure required financial, technical, and capacity building support for enhancing resilience through adaptation and mitigation measures also to achieve the targets at set forth, at, at set, forth, set forth in 15 plan, sectoral policies, programs, and activities, and to fulfill the commitments made in uh, INDCs and achieve the targets at set forth in UN SDGs as a party to the international instruments like Kyoto Protocol and Paris Climate Agreement. Nepal can collaborate with Germany in green, clean, and renewable energy uh, development through investment and technology transfer. And another um, uh, new area can be energy development. Of course, it's, it's already, uh, we are already engaged in this front, uh, but still, you know, uh, we can take benefit from uh, the strength that Germany has in this sector and carbon trading, cultural cooperation, uh, public health infrastructure in, 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 in light of the current ongoing uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, uh, the, uh, we, we can take benefit from already robust system of Germany for building back better this nascent public health infrastructure in Nepal, coupled with strong IT base and digitalization. Vaccine uh, so we're running out of time, so please almost wind done, up. Almost done, sir. Vaccine okay. production with the country with, within the country in collaboration with German financing may be an option if we have to adapt to live with the virus. Strengthening the, of democratic institutions is, 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 of course, it is also ongoing, but uh, the, the new paradigms uh, may be added. Collaboration between the parliaments of the two countries, establishment of sister city relations, streamlining the NGO sector, exchange and orientation programs, sharing of best practices, election observation, etc., may be new areas of cooperation in light of some of them being treated, le treated less important. And in the industrial intern internship is another uh, new area. The industrial internship that is already in pipeline should be an e exemplary venture between the two countries to develop an intensive skill among the participating youth entrepreneurs and industry industry employees to be attached with renowned companies in Germany and acquire knowledge, skill, and ideas for the establishment and operation of enterprises and to, to carry out the associated jobs. There are others in other in queue, but uh, I want to drop it. Drop uh, the drop the uh, my uh, statement here. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much, Ambassador Ram Kaji Kharka, Nepalese Ambassador to Germany. May I now invite Ambassador Dr. Bansidhar Mishra, Nepalese Ambassador to Bangladesh. Over to Excellency. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pramod Jaswalji, uh, Excellencies, and all the participants. Greetings from Bangladesh. Namaste. Uh, you have done a great job, actually. Uh, I'm very much uh, excited and, uh, um, uh, and uh, I thank you very much for uh, arranging such a conclave. So uh, being with time, I would like to speak not uh, what I have uh, written, uh, just extempo. Uh, as we all know that Bangladesh lies just uh, very closest after China and India, which we share borders. So the country which we don't share border, the nearest one is Bangladesh just connected uh, with land, 22 kilometers, somewhere less than that. And now 37 kilometer four lane Asian highway mm -hmm. is connecting through India. That's 37 kilometer in Siliguri corridor. And I, as you all know that Bangladesh is a newer country relatively. Bangladesh has celebrated its golden jubilee uh, this year, 2021 March, but it has developed miraculously from ridden with hunger and poverty now it has become an, a role model example in south asia and we can some have uh, told that it's tiger of south asia in economic development or all around development uh, we are very close and cordial friends nepal and bangladesh are emotionally sentimentally also attached because we had participation in the liberation war also. People came to fight. So still the sentiments exist. And people of Bangladesh feel very, very much close with Nepal uh, and help 
whenever they find opportunity, whenever they feel, and uh, whenever any disaster, anything happens in Nepal. The same with Nepalese also. And our uh, diplomatic relation started in uh, 1972, 8 April. Since then, we are having a very close and cordial relations in all round, uh, all areas. But very unfortunately, the relation has been in low profile. While we could have much more benefits on the basis of our strong relations, our sentimental relations, our close relations, but that has not been done. Eight, it has eight to be exploited still. We have got relations in uh, many areas. There are many mechanisms, I can say you, foreign office consultation mechanisms established on 31st July 2012 in Dhaka and a lot of uh, uh, talks uh, we have already done on that and uh, there are many things many visitors trade and commerce uh, we have joint economic cooperation that was uh, commission joint economic commission was set up in 1978 at the level of finance ministers uh we we have mechanism nepal bangladesh commerce secretary level a mechanism sixth meeting has uh, happened in 2020 uh, virtually and uh, joint group of Custom officials meet regularly. We have many MOUs, including avoidance of double taxation that has recently been done, and many more. And uh, I would like to describe Nepal Bangladesh relation in five areas of cooperation, you can say, or five agendas that would be uh, better to understand. and that those areas include connectivity in connectivity we are having only effective connectivity is the air connectivity Kathmandu Dhaka Dhaka Kathmandu two flights were before COVID now it has been stopped due to this COVID uh, and daily two flights were there one of our flight is that uh, but we need to extend and there we need to upgrade it extend it to Kathmandu Chittagong Kathmandu Silhet and other areas and very new regional connectivity has been focused actually uh, intending to fly from Sadpur, there uh, will be from Sadpur to Biratnagar, the eastern part of Nepal, hardly 20 minute flight. And that will connect two divisions, nearly four crore people very uh, closely with Nepal. So uh, that is what we are talking in this air connectivity and land connectivity. We are connected with the land, but there is some visa problems and other problems that Bangladeshi people are facing. So uh, you may be surprised to know that with 16.5 million officially uh, population of Bangladesh and being so close, only 30,000 people visit before COVID in the years, uh, last years, 2019, around 30,000 people only visit to Nepal. So due to some, this land connectivity are not being much smooth. So, uh, so we are focusing on that. Unfortunately, we are heading towards BBIN, that has become BIN, of course, because Bhutan has uh, dropped uh, for now and uh, agreed to be as absorber, motor vehicle agreement, that is passenger motor vehicle agreement, cargo motor vehicle agreement. And passenger motor vehicle agreement protocol is about, uh, about to be finalized, actually, because a lot of things have been done. Hopefully, that will be done and then things will be smooth. We are talking- We have one more minute, sir. Only one. Uh, yeah. So there are many areas, actually, in trade, we are hydropower is there, and a lot of works has been done in the hydropower sector and commodity trade. We are heading to us PTA, uh, although only 60 million uh, trade is there uh, within the countries. Uh, the trade in favor of Bangladesh and a lot, lot potentials. Tourism has got the potential, potentials. People to people um, contact. High level visits have been done. Two presidents have exchanged their visits. Honorable uh, President of Nepal, uh, <clears throat> right. Uh, uh, Her Excellency, Right Honorable uh, President, visited in March uh, to mark the Golden Jubilee ceremony and uh, also 100 birth centenary of uh, Bangabandhu. And in the area, of, actually, uh, there are uh, many, many chances to have our joint collaboration in many areas, e education, agriculture, Bangladesh produces uh, three crops in paddy, the uh, agriculture seeds and other things actually we can exchange of idea technology and many more things so there are many in defense sector also and bangladesh has 
helped us a lot in this pandemic also uh, with the 10,000 samples of remdesivir for free and others sending their lot of from uh, many agencies from people level, they are helping Nepal. And uh, actually in many sectors, Bangladesh, people are interested to invest in Nepal. So we have got very, 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 very uh, wide opportunity and we have to focus on extending our relations uh, that in the benefit of Nepal and Bangladesh. That's all for now. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Excellency Dr. Bansidhar Mishra. May I now invite Ambassador Krishna Prasad Dhakal, Nepal Ambassador to UAE. Over to you, Excellency. Thank you, Dr. Saab. Excellencies, distinguished participants, namaste. Good afternoon. At the outset, I would like to thank NICE for organizing this program and inviting me as a speaker. The relations between Nepal and the UAE is close, friendly, and ever growing since the establishment of diplomatic relations on 22nd January 1977. We are working together in international fora to promote our common interests. The UAE is third largest trading partner of Nepal and fourth major destination for Nepali migrant workers. The UAE is the fourth largest source country of remittance income for Nepal. I'm happy to state that the contribution made by Nepal youths in accelerating development and economic growth of the UAE is widely recognized and cherished by the leadership of the UAE. Likewise, UAE is one of the important development partners of Nepal. UAE has been providing bilateral development cooperation in the sectors of economic infrastructure, education, health, energy, etc. The UAE has been extending generous support to Nepal in times of difficulty. In the aftermath of the devastating earthquake of 2015, the UAE provided humanitarian aid to Nepal. Last year in April, the UAE sent a special aircraft with COVID-19 related medical goods and supplies to Nepal to fight the pandemic. This year too, the UAE provided 150 ventilators, 150 trolleys, 318,000 masks, 9,000 cover all, 15,000 gown, and 20,000 goggles to Nepal. Nepali community in the UAE has also collected more than 47 lakhs Nepali rupees and sending 69,000 disposable virus sampling swab kits to Nepal in coordination with the embassy. Some of the UAE-based charity organizations and private sectors are also interested to help Nepal with medical goods and supplies. We are requesting the government of the UAE to provide COVID-19 vaccines to Nepal. Regarding prospects of future cooperation between our two countries, it seems enormous. I do believe that the Gulf countries, including the UAE, are going to be more prosperous in the days to come. Hence, Nepal should further enhance its engagement with these countries. The UAE's economy is gradually bouncing back from COVID-19. This is creating lots of lucrative jobs. Nepal can take advantage of these opportunities. But we have to take into account the fact that the UAE economy is being more mechanized, digitized, and automatized, and the nature of jobs and its requirements are also changing accordingly. Mostly unskilled laborers, 
we are sending today as construction workers and security guards will lose their jobs significantly. For example, Dubai police is planning to use 25% robot police by 2030. Similarly, construction and mining sector will be no longer major sector of employment. In this backlog, we need to be strategic in identifying appropriate jobs that better fit for Nepalese. It may be medical doctors, nurses, chefs, software engineers, etc. Similarly, enhancing knowledge and skills to match the change job requirements should be our priority. For this, establishing a polytechnic institute in Nepal in collaboration with the UAE can be the way forward. FDI is another important area of further, further cooperation. The UAE has second largest sovereign wealth funds in the world. Emirati people have an enormous amount of money to invest. Business friendly environment in the ground and investment facilitating mechanisms such as BIPA and DTAA in place will definitely pave the way to enhance the confidence of Emirati people to invest in Nepal. We have huge prospects for bilateral trade too. Nepal can export fresh drinking water, fruits, vegetables, handicrafts, cardamom, and so on. Some of them are already in the UAE market, but in a small amount. To effectively penetrate the UAE market, we must be more innovative and competitive not only in quality and quantity of goods, but also in marketing and supply chain. Tourism is another area of hope. There is an outstanding match between tourist attractions in Nepal and Emirati liking for our country. And there is an excellent connectivity between our two countries 84 flights a week before pandemic. I think designing an innovative, attractive, and Emirati-friendly tour packages and actively mobilizing local tour operators to reach out to local residents is crucial. In addition, science and technology, art and culture, youth development, renewable energy, climate change, and international peace are some of the areas where we can cooperate more in bilateral and multilateral level in the days to come. The embassy is always playing its role to strengthen our bilateral roles and friendly cooperation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, Ambassador Krishna Prasad Dhakal. May I now invite Ambassador Mani Prasad Vatrai, Ambassador, PR of Nepal to the United Nations and other international organizations in Geneva. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Excellencies, distinguished participants. It's a great pleasure to participate in the Global Conclave 2021. I thank NICE for the kind invitation. Given the time limit, I can only cover a bird's eye view on Nepal's relations with two countries, Switzerland and Italy, focusing mainly on three dimensions as stated by the moderator, the status of economic and development cooperation, COVID support, and future prospects of further cooperation. Now I begin with uh, Nepal-Swiss bilateral relations. Nepal and Switzerland enjoy excellent state of relations our diplomatic relation was established in November 1956. Friendship, mutual understanding, and cooperation mark the relations. Our relations not, are not just uh, limited to government to government level, but are also growing with people to people exchanges. There is bilateral consultation mechanism set up in 2015 to review all aspects of bilateral relations for enhancing cooperation in areas of trade, investment, tourism, and consular affairs. 
it made first in Kathmandu in 2016, second in Burr in 2018, and his third meeting was supposed to be held in Kathmandu in 2020, but postponed due to COVID restrictions and is likely to be held once COVID situation in Nepal is under control. Switzerland is a reliable development partner of Nepal. Nepal is a priority country in Switzerland's development cooperation framework. Switzerland and Nepal have also concluded a bilateral agreement on technical cooperation in 1972. The Swiss government implements the development projects in Nepal through Swiss Agency for Development Cooperation, STC. Swiss contribution focuses on agriculture and rural development, entrepreneurship, and poverty alleviation. The four-year Swiss cooperation strategy for Nepal, 2018-2021, with a total budget of around 134 million Swiss francs, has three focus areas, namely consolidation of peace conflict prevention and human rights, second, employment and economic development, and third, migration. Switzerland is also an important trading partner of Nepal. In Nepal's total exports in 2020, Switzerland is ranked 14th position with an export worth of 3.4 million US dollar and 26th position in Nepal's total imports with Swiss imports amounting to 22 million US dollar. On investment side, there are a total of 60 projects approved with Swiss investment of 2.9 billion Nepalese rupees until 15th of July, 2020, which created 1,575 jobs. In terms of investment in human capital, Switzerland has been regularly providing scholarships and training facilities to Nepalese students and professionals. We have very close working relations with CERN, European Organization for Nuclear Research and other academia in Switzerland. The government of Nepal and CERN has signed the agreement of scientific cooperation in 2018. Tourism from Switzerland has a huge potential. Swiss are quality tourists having high per capita income. Swiss love to visit Nepal for mountaineering, hiking, trekking, adventure type activities. Over 8,000 tourists arrived from Switzerland to Nepal in 2019. There is a need to develop attractive tourism packages in collaboration with travel and tour operators to ensure tourism recovery from the pandemic. Now turning to Nepal-Italy relations, diplomatic relation between Nepal and Italy was established in 1959. The relation is based on cordiality, mutual interest and cooperation. Nepal and Italy maintain honorary consulates in Rome and Kathmandu respectively. Bilateral consultation mechanism, however, between Nepal and Italy is yet to be established. Italy extends development cooperation to Nepal, particularly through EU and international agencies. It, in a on a particular note, Italy hosted Expo Milano 2015. This event collected a donation of more than 700,000 euros for the reconstruction of earthquake damage infrastructure in Nepal. It is also an important trading partner of Nepal. In Nepal's total exports in 2020, Italy is ranked 11th position with exports worth of 5.5 million US dollar and 31st position in Nepal's total imports with imports from Italy accounting for 16 million US dollar. Nepal has been regularly participating in international trade fairs held in Milan. As far as Italy's investment is concerned, a total of 39 projects have been launched with the investment of 637 million Nepalese rupees until 15th of July, 2020, creating 1,061 jobs. Tourism from Italy has also a huge potential. Italy's are two quality tourists for Nepal. Tourist arrival from Italy is around 16,000 in 2019. These sectors remain hard hit due to COVID-19. Attractive tourism package is needed to recover from it. Few words on diaspora diplomacy. Growing Nepali community is an important part of bilateral relations. Nepali diaspora in Switzerland is around 500 in numbers. There are around 1,500 Nepalese engaging in various professions in Italy. The Embassy of Nepal has been organizing various programs focusing on tourism, trade, 
investment and technology transfer to Nepal in collaboration with the Nepali community, students and scholars, and friends of Nepal. Such activities have been currently postponed due to COVID-19 and will be resumed once the situation returns to normalcy. Now, moving to COVID-19 support, even though Switzerland and Italy happen to be hard hit by the COVID-19, Swiss government has provided generous medical support in Nepal with 30 tons of COVID-19 related consignment, including 1.1 million antigen tests, 40 respirators, 10 oxygen concentrators and PPEs. Switzerland had also extended support to Nepal during the first wave of COVID-19. So far equivalent to 12 million Swiss franc medical support has been received from Switzerland. Honorary Consul General of Nepal to Italy has been active to seek medical support from the government of Italy. Just two days ago, Italy has delivered Nepal 20 ventilators, 6,000 isolation gowns, and 10,000 protective overalls. Nepali diaspora from both countries have also provided medical support to Nepal. Finally, I will briefly point out on the prospects for future cooperation. Nepal and Switzerland have excellent state of relations with solid foundation. It goes the same in the case of Nepal-Italy ties as well. Both countries have immense goodwill, sympathy, and support to Nepal. There is a huge potential for broadening and deepening these relations in the areas of trade, tourism, investment, technology, knowledge, and skill transfer, and research collaboration. For the possibility of cooperation, remain in education, sports, and hospitality sectors through the conduct of cultural and public diplomacy. There is also a need to continue collaboration at multilateral platforms in order to promote our common interests of both countries. With these words, I conclude my remarks. I wish a fruitful discussion of the conclave. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Ambassador Mani Prasad Bhattrai. Excellencies, here we come to the end of the program. We'd like to thank all our excellencies and their missions for the support. Please accept our deepest apologies for providing you too little time for the remarks. We are aware that it is too little time to explain the deep ties of two countries and the wonderful job that we have engaged with, especially during the crisis. Actually, we are not aware that we'd receive such an overwhelming, overwhelming support, love and encouragement for this event from all the embassies. Uh, we were so we are really privileged, privileged and honored by your, by your trust. Uh, due to over, uh, overwhelming support, we had to plan two sessions and that to limit within eight minutes. We promise to invite you again for detailed discussion in future because these are very important issues to understand Nepal's bilateral relations. Please continue your love and support for NICE. Hope to see you again in future in real or virtual. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir.